This is the front of the Lilith Bianca uh, and shows all the major controls and features of the machine and I'm just going to quickly go through them. Uh, at the back here is the water tank. It's an unusual feature uh, because you can actually move it from one side to the other. It only takes a few minutes to do and there's a video on that. Or you could actually remove it altogether if you were running uh, plumbed into the mains. So it just gives you that flexibility. Here's what we call a cup warmer tray. It uses a grid rather than a flat plate. The advantages of a grid are it doesn't show scratches and allows much better ventilation for ex internal components and uh, your cups will get that a little bit hotter as well. On the left is the steam wand, on the right is the water wand. Beautiful walnut knobs, nice chrome dome feature hiding the securing bolt. Uh, these are cool wall ones and ball joint at the top, so good, good range of movement. And these ones don't get hot when you steam or pull some water, unless you did a, an awful long uh, period of steaming, then it might get a little bit warm. One of the unusual features, or another unusual feature, is the paddle on the top of the group. That controls a needle valve, and this allows you to vary the flow rate within the group, the E61 group, and the pressure that's developed on the coffee. That pressure on the coffee is shown very accurately by this gauge on the group. Again, another unusual feature. It's not a new idea. I've seen it done many years ago, but what it does do is accurately reflect the pressure being applied to the coffee, whereas a normal brew pressure gauge doesn't do that. Moving down, uh, we've got the lever. When we're talking about an E61 group, which is this entire lump of metal, when we say a lever group, we talk about this lever here. This lever can be in two positions. It can be just above the horizontal when you lift it, or lowered as it is now. When you lift it to just above the horizontal, it starts the pump. When you lower it, it actually vents excess pressure in the group out of the vent. That's useful for a few reasons, but mainly it stops your kitchen getting sprayed with coffee grounds when you remove the group handle here to add new coffee or knock out the old puck. Uh, the porter filter I'm using is what's called a bottomless porter filter, so you can diagnose any issues with the shots. It gives you a different perspective on what's happening. Useful when you're testing a machine and it's why you can't see any spouts. Then we have a, guy, uh, a controller here that controls all the major functions of the machine, the computer side, the advanced settings of the PID, it controls temperature, brew temperature, steam boiler temperature, whether the steam boiler's on and off, and a whole host of things. Then here we have a pressure gauge. It's showing uh, steam boiler pressure and the actual maximum or the pressure of the pump itself. And if you're setting your pump pressure, you'd close this paddle here and it would show the maximum pressure that the pump is capable of producing which I've set to 10 bar on this machine. Um, moving downwards, we've got our drip tray. And again, it's a grid, doesn't show scratches. It's easier to clean. Um, it's also gives you a, a, an easy view as to whether it's full. If you use smooth bottom glasses, uh, you might find that they'll wander on this strip tray a little because there's not much surface area that the glasses are touching on. But I much prefer them, they're much, much better. And a quick wipe keeps them looking fantastic. At the bottom here, a feet. all the feet are height adjustable. They weren't on the prototype, but that's been changed and they're now height adjustable. If you do get a slightly uneven flow, it means that a little adjustment on the feet and you can even out the flow into two glasses under a twin spouted porter filter or indeed if the machine is plumbed in you might want to lift the front feet slightly to aid the draining of the drip tray. Uh, the mirror finish stainless steel here is beautiful but it's important to be careful with it. Uh, tear labels out of e-cloths and use an e-cloth. Never use anything abrasive on it. Be gentle with it because you don't want to haze it. I love the metal button here because it's a latching button which means it's on or off. It's not a soft switch where you press it and it returns. That means you can use a mains timer to control the on off times of the machine so it's ready for you when you wake up in the morning. 
Now, one thing I did want to add uh, about the Lilith, and uh, any machine really, see the top of the drip tray here and here and here. I often see these scratched on the machine. It really does make them look old, you know, and there's no need for it. If you do use ceramic cups, or even glass, but especially ceramic cups, um, if you don't lift them off and take them over, if you just drag them across a stand in there or slide them on, it's very easy for this area to get damaged. And it just makes the machine look really old. And th these machines should look as good five years later as they do when they're brand new. The other thing is that you'll get little splatters of coffee. Wipe it with a, a damp sponge initially and let it sit for 15-20 seconds just to soften everything before you wipe it again and then dry it off with a soft e-cloth with the label pulled out. Uh, it just makes all the difference and, and this goes for the case as well and if you use a cleaner I use method stainless steel cleaner it's um, just a clear liquid it's totally non-abrasive make sure you use something completely non-abrasive. Most cream steel cleaners are abrasive, so be super careful about that. But looking at the machine as well, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. The finish is so nice. I normally don't say this about machines, but I did sort of fall in love with this, which is why I bought the prototype. And the prototype's not quite as well finished as this. It doesn't have the uh, beautiful mirror finishing reflected on the water tank as well but yeah it, it's a real beauty and the, the other thing i'm going to comment on is um something they called the coffee slide and i don't know if i can get to that i'll try there we go this is what i think they call their coffee slide i've never seen such a beautiful porter filter design before and the coffee flows it looks fantastic and here's the bottom of it very unusual design does of course have the slight drawbacks which is why they put a little raised stand for small cups is that if you're doing a single espresso out of this you've got to get the cup pretty close and not use too narrow a cup to ensure that the streams don't sort of miss the edges of the cup but it's so beautiful i can forgive it that 